Hi, I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. I am thrilled to be showing you this tutorial today. This quilt is beautiful and I am so anxious to give you all the details. First, I want to show you the quilt I made earlier this year. It's a little bit different than this, but just to give you an idea of, of the variation that you can make with this particular pattern. It's very, very versatile. So first, after looking at that, we're going to talk about fabric selection. Then I'm going to show you some really good sewing tips and techniques that's going to make putting this quilt together much easier and just look so well finished when you're completed. And then, of course, we need to do some layouts with the block and what works, what doesn't work, how to put it together. There's so much information in this tutorial, so please, I can't wait for you to get through this and get all the information and then make your own quilt. I can't wait to see it. Before we get started on the fabric for this quilt, I want to show you this up close. This was made with older two inch strips and it, I like the, the, smaller, the smaller blocks. I think it turned out wonderfully, but this next one I'm going to make will be with two and a half. But notice all the variety of fabrics. I think in a, a quilt like this, more is better because it's a lot of fun. And what I did is I knew pink was going to be the prominent rail. So I chose blocks that mostly had colors that would work with pink. And I want to show you the fabric that we're going to work with. This quilt is going to be made with a lot of different pre-cuts. So I'm going to start from fat quarters, jelly rolls, charm squares to get us to where we need to be, as well as some yardage. So this is really one of my stash, my fat quarter stash quilts. Um, and I just want to show you how I'm going to put this together. This was a group of um, jelly rolls that was left over. And I really want to go with the blues on this, and I want to go with the yellows. I'm going to pull the darker, almost russet colors. I don't want to use that in this quilt. This one is still a little iffy, but I like the bright blocks. Now I have these folded because I have two of each of these. This is a definite, even though it has the darker gold, it has that blue, and the blue brightens that up. There's also sort of this, this burgundy color in here that I think is going to be a lot of fun. This I'm not sure about yet. Um, reason being is it's very orange and it doesn't really tie into a whole lot maybe here, but there is some pink in here and some yellow, so we'll see where the fabric ends up and if that's something I want to go with. Some of the pieces that I pulled out, well first let me show you what our rail will be. Our primary rail for every block is going to be this light blue batik. So I pulled this piece of yardage out because I thought this would make some good rails, um, the two inch block. So we're going to be using two and a half inch squares and they'll finish at two inch blocks. And this is a pretty batik with the turquoise. It has the yellows and it has the real light blue, which I think will look nice with that. There's a start there. And then I found some, some interesting layer cakes that were left over and they're on the lighter side and that's kind of okay lightening this up isn't isn't a bad thing because there's a lot of really dark colors i don't know that i necessarily want it to be really dark okay now look here i found some more jelly rolls and what else do i have um here's a fat quarter i thought i had more layer cakes maybe not so here's a fat quarter. So these are more pastel, which are kind of fun. And it sort of really lightens things up. So it brings in the yellow. It brings in some pink. It definitely plays off the burgundy, which is nice. This is just the straight sort of light aqua blue. And this, actually I've used this in a quilt recently. I have a leftover fat quarter piece, plus I have a charm square. And I don't know if I'm going to go with those pinks or not. This is a lot of pink. So I'll, I'll set those aside and think about it. Interesting, I've got this orange. Um, this would be okay with this. You know, some of these colors. So maybe if I have these two together in the quilt, they'll sort of play off each other and that'll tone this guy down. Ordinarily, I don't use a fabric without a printed pattern. This is just sort of a wash of colors. 
for a quilt like this, I prefer to have prints just because it makes it look more interesting when you have lots of little blocks. But these colors are great, and I think there's enough contrast between the colors that it, it makes it definitely more interesting. So we'll take that. Oh, now this, okay, so here are the other layer cakes. I knew I had more. And this sort of falls into that orange kind of pinky. So maybe I can bring that in. Um, let's see, this is definitely that. Okay, so I think these can work really well. That's great. I wasn't sure I'd be able to use these in here, but I do like them. This one, I don't know. Again, you know me with purple. I get too much purple and I sort of get a little little hesitant, but I don't, I just think that's too much. There's, other than the fish, there's really no other really um, bold pattern, and I'm afraid this would just stand out too much, and everywhere you'd see it in the quilt, that's all you would see. So I'm going to set that aside for another piece. So this is where I'm going to go. What I want to show you a sample of is how to make this block whether you're using layer cakes, whether you're using charm squares, or jelly rolls, um, or even yardage, because I'm going to be cutting yardage from that, which is not unlike cutting from a fat quarter. So let me go ahead and get some pieces laid out and uh, show you how we're going to put this together. I think we have a fun group of fabrics that's going to look really pretty, but I really like these. So let's go with it. It's such fun to see all the cut fabric laid out together and ready to sew, you get an idea of what the colors of the quilt will be. And I, I get excited at this point and I'm looking at the colors. Do I like them? What do, what do I want to add or take out? And I'm, I'm very happy. This was that one orange I wasn't quite sure about, but it kind of adds some fun and, and it works off of these here. So all in all, I think it's going to work well. Plus just peeking out, I can see some more of that orange. So I'm okay with that. That was the only one I was questioning, but let's talk about how this goes together. We are making a rail fence that is pieced together. So what we're going to do is, if you remember the block that I showed you in the pink quilt, we have one long rail like this, our, our six and a half inch, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. These are how we're making those smaller pieces. So the first example I'm going to show you is with jelly rolls. Now you can make this quilt out of fat quarters, layer cakes, jelly rolls, or charms. Essentially what you need is to use a two and a half by a two and a half by five inch piece. So in this case, what I did on the long strips, I had a lot of jelly roll scraps, and that's kind of where I started. So I cut them into 10 inch widths or lengths, I guess you'd call it. It's two and a half by 10 long. And I'm going to use three per unit. I'm, I'm pre-assembling. This is like a strip set that, that we're making. And each of them will go together. Let's see, I use some black thread in here. And you see that? We do a quarter inch with each piece so that they're going to open like this. Now these were, 10 inch and I cut them in half. So first I'll sew one side, then I'll sew the other. I'll press everything in one direction and cut them in half like that. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now the other option for making your blocks is using charm squares. So let me show you some, some examples here. This is a block that I made with two charm squares. I'm trying to see if I have one here. And again, these have the quarter inch seam down each side. And when you open it up, then you've got your two rails. But remember, we need a third rail. And then what we're going to do, I did end up pulling one of these pinks. Remember I said I wasn't going to use these with pinks, well this one isn't quite so pink and it happened to be convenient and I'm just going to cut what I need and what I'm doing is I'm cutting the part with the pink in half so it's not going to be terribly prominent but 
because there's a bit of pink in here, it's going to be kind of fun. All right, back to our block. So what we'll do at this point is I'll sew this onto this one and this here, or I can go there. You can break it up either way, and maybe I'll put the pink down here so they're sort of offset diagonally. So by doing this, you see we're getting our triple rails, but there is another step. I just want to show you what this looks like when they're sewn together. And everything is chain pieced. I do everything chain stitch first, then I come back, I cut it apart, and then do what I need to do. And in this case, the next step is to press it. So all these are going to press in one direction, and whatever direction you choose is fine. So these aren't ready yet. That was just a preliminary, but let me show you what we're going to do is these are all going to be cut down to two and a half inches. So they're currently, there we go, they're currently five by six and a half, and we want it to be two and a half inches. So we're going to go like this, and I'll do the same with this one. And having a two and a half inch ruler is so nice because I don't have to worry about the grid. We'll just set those aside. And now we'll take this one. We'll do the same thing. And I promise I'm being careful with my blade. I know it's open, but I'm keeping it a good distance. And so this is how we're going to put our blocks together. And the idea is that we are going to, of course, with a quarter inch seam, they'll be a little bit smaller. We're going to have six colors in each block. Now, I'm not going to want to put two of the same together like this. Um, you know, I can always flip it, but I'm going to choose other colors completely in order to put that together. And those are all the same. Here's our first step is we're going to get all our three pieces, our strip sets sewn together. Whether you do it with your 10 inch jelly roll pieces or you use your charm squares, we want to then trim them down so we have two and a half by six and a half inches. Once all those are finished, then we're going to put our quilt in place with our third rail. And this is the one that's going to create the contrast design throughout the quilt. Now, you probably heard my motto, measure twice, cut once. I didn't do that. I was so caught up with the five inch business here. I have 56 pieces of two and a half by five inch rails that won't work for this quilt because I'm certainly not going to use one of these in every block. Now, if I were doing a more traditional uh, rail fence, then this would be my third, but I really want to go with the patchwork. So you know you'll be seeing that in a future quilt, not too too far from now. We'll get that, that taken care of. But right now, I want to go ahead and get all these pieces sewn together, do the strip sewing with three strips, press them, and cut them into the smaller two and a half by six and a half, and then we're going to get ready to put a quilt together. After cutting these individually into the strip sets that will be joined together to make the rail fence, I wanted to find an easier way because this is fussy, cutting everything into all these small pieces. We have 56 squares, that's what, 112 of these little guys floating around, and I thought, no. I don't really want to deal with all that, so there's got to be an easier way. So the first thing I tried was taking two strip sets and sewing them down each side. So we have a quarter inch seam down each side. And I thought, okay, what I can do here is draw a line down the center and sew on each side. So what this will do is give me, here we go, this is the one that I sewed and I cut down the middle. This will give me 
two two basically two charms that are pre-sewn. So I would set cut down the middle and I would cut down both the sides. So here we have pre-sewn and I already cut down the center. Now I'm going to cut two and a half inches on each side and show you what this does. And I'm going to turn it this way rather than use that center seam just so I'm kind of consistent in how I do this. So when I do this, so again, this is the, the method we're using, just sew it down the, down the center, draw a line, sew two seams, then I'm going to get four of these blocks. And they're going to be reverse of each other, so that's all right. So we'll get two like this, and we'll get two like this. And I don't usually like to duplicate my blocks too much, but this over here is just a lot of work. My concern with this method is getting that center seam because I can't see it. Remember now, I've sewn this closed, I drew a line, and I can use my finger to kind of gauge, but look at they came out really really well so as long as the one on the ends are okay and you can kind of put your finger in there and make sure they're good that worked out very well so i was happy with that so i'm going to go ahead and cut this one but then while i was doing this i thought you know there are some of these i may not want as much of one color um, repeated, you know, the the color block, the strip set may be too prominent, or I don't know, for whatever reason, I may not want to duplicate that. So I came up with something else, and I thought, here's a different idea. So again, I'm starting with my strip set like this, and what I do is I'm going to take two and a half inches off this side, just like that. Take two and a half inches off this side. And that goes there. And now I have this centerpiece and it's separate. If I were to obviously sew these next two together, I'm going to have the same thing. So instead, I'm just going to take the top one and put it at the bottom. That way, each of these are going to match up with a different set of blocks. Now, some are going to be right side, wrong side. You're going to have to adjust that. Some you might have to flip. But this way, we're going to get a much better mix of fabrics. So this is the method I'm going to use to finish. So we've got three different ways of doing it. This, I think, is my favorite. This is probably the quickest because you don't have to do this extra step of sewing. You can just sew down the center cut and it's done. This is the most work, but probably going to have the best mix and gives you the most control of where your fabric is going. But remember, this is a quilt with a lot of different fabrics. How many did we have over here? 15 or 20? So there's quite a bit there. That's still a good mix of fabrics. So even if they're they're bundled up here and you, you kind of flip them around here and you can put one over here, um, this is all going to work. I really like this method the best because it's going to give me the best of both. It's an easy way to sew it without fussing with the individual yet I'm not going to get as much repetition. So I just had to show this to you before I put the quilt together because I want to give you that option to think about what would work best for you. I'll be interested to know what your choice is. Now that I have this ready, I'll finish these blocks up and then I'll show you how we're going to add that final rail. We've come a long way here. Two piles and each one has a, I guess we'll call it a six patch or a six pack. I'm not sure what but uh, each pile has one of each. So rather than having two side by side, I put it into two different piles. I'll go through one pile and then I'll do the second. And that's just how I, I generally do my quilts when I have duplicates like this so that I can space them out um, throughout the quilt. 
Now, this is where we're going to add our rail. And it can be done either way. I did not press this center seam after I cut the uh, blocks in half because I don't know which way it's going to go until I add it to the rail. And so I can choose as I'm going along whether I want the rail here or here. So as I'm sewing, I'm going to chain stitch all these real quick. It'll go fast. And I'm going to put my rail in here. And then we've got, got our blocks ready to quilt. So go ahead and get all the uh, rails attached to these blocks. And then we're going to put this quilt together and celebrate. Wow, that's an orange and blue color scheme, and I really like it. I think this is going to be fantastic. It's going to stand out really well. And all these blocks are all pressed. They're ready to go. And now it's time to put our quilt together. Just one thing about this block that I want to show you. It looks very similar to the one that we did recently. This is the asymmetrical rail fence, but notice how we have three double size or they're rectangles so they're double the square we have rectangles where this we broke it down and this is a fun quilt it's very easy to lay out very easy to make obviously it takes less time because there's fewer seams but this brings in a whole lot more color and uh, you can do so much more with the design I think these are a lot of fun if you've got the time you've got the fabric you know you're good to go now, there is one other, um, I don't have a sample of the block, but I'll make sure the video link is available. It's the uh, Scrappy 9 patch. And what I did on that one is I took these six and then turned these also into three two-inch squares using low-volume fabric. Now, that quilt turned out gorgeous. All the blocks were done in blues blue and white and then this was done with white and some really light blue prints but for the most part very low volume fabric it came out stunning so it's it's a it's a matter of what you want to do the time you want to put into it what fabric you want but there is so much you can do with this rail fence block but i just wanted to show that to you so if you're a little overwhelmed by doing something like this for the first time you're making a rail fence this then is going to be um, a much easier way to do it and i will make sure that that video is included well as well there is one other which is the super simple easy baby charm square quilt um, a rail fence quilt and it just has two blocks oh my goodness that's that's probably about the easiest you can go um, and then, of course, well, there's just so many. I can just keep going on. But right now, we need to work on this one. I get excited when I talk about quilts and options and what we can do. And I want to show you here what, um, let's see, it goes this way, what the typical layout is for a rail fence. When I say typical, I mean to get the zigzag pattern going. There we go. And the zigzag pattern is sort of the, let's see, this goes this way, the iconic rail fence identification. When you, you talk about a rail fence, that's what people think of. You see how we've got this rail coming like that. And so if we keep repeating the pattern, then let's make some room here. Where am I? I need to go this one, this one, this one and I can't talk and do it at the same time. It's not quite like doing math, but you really have to follow along to get that pattern in place. But let me show you just how simple this pattern is. Look at this. Up, left, up, left, whichever side it is to you, this camera flip things around different ways. But essentially, it's going to be this 90 degree all the way across your row. Now, we're going to do the same thing here. Look at this. We have the up and we have the left, and then we have the up and then we have the left. The difference is 
that we're going to add one at the beginning of this row to offset it. So now that rail fence is going to be created because if we just did this, we would just have all these, you know, straight pieces going every which way without any specific pattern. So this is this is one way of doing it. Um, and, and it helps to understand how the pattern works. One of the ways I will frequently piece my quilt is to pre-assemble a four patch. Because if I create this four patch, then I can put these side by side and not worry about getting my pattern off. Because I'll tell you, it's easy to do. I have done it frequently, which is why I started doing the four patch method. Just by putting these four blocks together like this, then when it comes time to actually put the quilt together, it's a lot quicker because these are pre-assembled. I generally will sew these and press them so the seams are all in good shape. And then, you know, we're good to go. So this is one option. Now, if you were watching last, I think it's about a week or so ago, we did a quilt that was really fun. And look at how simple this was. This one went all one direction, just like this. And then this one just went the other direction, like this. Oops, and then this one goes this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. So you get this vertical line, which I think is really cool. Um, and it turned out beautifully. That that was a, a really fun layout. And it was just the straight blocks. That's the quilt we made out of the, the example that I showed you that just had the straight rails. But the other thing, um, because I did it, the the vertical, the length of the quilt, I thought, well, it would be fun maybe then to do it horizontally. And let me show you what that means. Where this is down, the entire row goes down. Where this is up, the entire row goes up, down. So see how easy the rail fence is? It's just the, the it's just alternating every other row. So now we have this horizontal, yep, that's in the right place. This horizontal, I did something wrong. What did I do? Okay, this one's gotta go this way. Got it. Oh. And it's very easy to find your mistakes. But again, if you wanted, you could do um do a four patch, though it it isn't necessary. The only thing with, whoops, excuse me, with a um, patchwork like this is you are going to have some areas that you will be matching your rails, but that's not uncommon in a rail fence. This will have more um, simply because, we don't want those side by side, simply because we have the extra patchwork in here. And we've got, uh, oh, go that way we've got these extra little seams but they're going to go together really well and i'll give you one tip that i think will make a big difference these seams between the colored blocks and your your um background rail that's the seam that matters if you happen to be off just a little bit and it depends on the layout like you know when you're going like this um and you have these seams, then you're not you're not going to worry too much about these. You want to get this straight, but this one can be off a little. The difference with this, when they're all side by side, is those rails are top and bottom, so you have more to match. So those those are just things to think about. Um, is it really critical? No, you can you can get by with with a little bit of what I call a fudge factor, and uh, not everything has to be perfect because there's so much going on that primarily the rail is going to be the focus. And then in your quilting, if you do your quilting where the rail is dominant, maybe do some straight, that, oh, I used to do a lot of rail fence quilts, and I would always do the straight stitching along the rails. It can be a job, it can be cumbersome to, uh, it's all the turns that kind of got me crazy. But um, then the other way I quilted it was to use what they call the orange peel. I would do this little semicircle 
this elongated oval, and that was really fun. And uh, I always like um, quilt patterns that sort of reinforces these corners. I always kind of worry about that coming apart. I, I used to sew lots of clothing, and I'm used to that 5 8 inch seam. So switching to a quarter seam, even though it's been decades, I, I'm still hesitant about that. Um, so, yeah, this is where we are. I think this is the way I'm going to go. And I'm going to do a lateral pattern. I'm just going to do seven across the top and then do eight rows down and we're good to go so the first thing we're going to do is chain stitch and remember that's putting these rows together and then i'm going to sew going to chain stitch starting at the top i'm going to sew down here sew down here sew down here then i'm going to open that up these are connected now and i'm going to add the third so I'm going to put this one here and here and here, do the chain stitch, open, and continue sewing. So it will go pretty quick, and I can't wait to show you the finished quilt. That's a lot of talking, just for a little bit of layout. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, see how this is going to turn out. I'm really excited. These colors look great. Before I even started sewing, I came up with this great idea of how to put this together without making a mistake because that's always my concern is I'm going to flip a block around. So because these rows all go in the same direction and we're going to chain piece, we're going to be sewing them like this. Now the first row is a little touchy because we know the first square, the first block will go up, the second block will go down. We're talking about the rail up, the rail down, and you sew those through. Once you get this first one in, you open it, you double check, make sure it's good. Then you take your, your blocks and you stage them. Okay, this is an up row. So I am just going to pull off the top and I'm going to set this right in here. They're all going to go up. And then the next row is going to go down. So I'm going to turn my pile down and then I'm just going to place these. So I don't even have to think about which way they go or or double check and make sure that I haven't made a mistake because that's just such an easy way to put it together. I'm really excited. I just haven't ever come up with this particular method before and it works great for me. I can tell already that it's going to go together really simply with no mistakes. So give it a try and I promise I'll get to the quilting now so we can see this finished. So I wanted to show you after the chain stitching how this quilt is looking. It is coming together great, but I had two other tips that I wanted to share with you. When you are pressing your blocks before quilting, we want to press all the seams away from the solid rail, the dominant rail. And the reason for that is when you flip the rails, so you have one going this way and the other the opposite direction these seams are going to also go in the opposite direction so it's going to be much easier to nest those seams and they'll go together really nicely look at that so that's one um, really important tip that i want to make sure i mention and um, the other thing is in talking about putting a pile next to your sewing machine so you know what direction you're sewing your blocks in. No sooner did I sit down and I had all my blocks going, you know, in the direction I knew I was going to sew, and I came across the uh, block I was going to attach to, and it's like, wait, these are too close together. I don't want those, you know, side by side. So I started flipping through my pile, and I thought, no, nope, that's how things get mixed up. That's how they get turned around. That's how I make a mistake. So I just divided my pile in half and I would just choose from the top of one pile or the other and that seemed to do the trick. I didn't have any more problems after that. So staging that pile and turning it according to the direction you're um, placing your background rail is a big help, but split it into two piles and then you're going to have a choice so you're going to be less apt to mixing things up. Those are two really big tips that help me. But I want to show you, this is all chain pieced together. And when I, I press the back, these seams go this way, these seams go that way. And so 
when the final seams get put together, it all nests really nice and it lays flat. So when it's time to do the quilting, you're good to go. But let me show you a bit of this here, how this looks. I just, I really like this. This is a lot of fun. It's, it's bright. It has a lot of colors in it, but it's not overwhelmingly so. This, and you know, if this were white, this would really be a, a much starker contrast. But I like the blue, and it just plays off all the blues, and it sort of creates a nice, comfortable color scheme that I, I really like. And there's some wonderful prints in here. The dominant is the, the fish. There's probably, the, it's the same fish fabric, but it's in, I think, four different colors. Blue on gold, purple on blue, blue on blue, and gold on gold. And they're just great fun. And uh, I think it turned out fabulously well. I can't wait to get the last couple rows together. And then we have got a finished quilt. And here we have a finished beauty that just looks wonderful. These colors just work so well together. And that blue rail is fabulous. I love how it looks. This quilt turned out so terrific. I really like it. And I hope you're excited to make your very own version. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. I know there was a lot of information here, but I hope you found it helpful. Thanks so much and have a fantastic day.